welcome back to the show. In today's episode of Creative Capital, we've just gotten off the streets. We've just wrapped up that project you just saw, and we're going to delve in a little bit to the details of that while we casually sit in our air conditioned and soft couch. Woo! <laughs> the project was uh, pretty crazy, uh, quite a feat on the knees. So when we started the project, you remember that from a couple episodes ago, it started out as a small stencil based off of a local flower. And we basically had to turn that into a massive batch of stencils that could hold up under a lot of changing site conditions and locations on the street. So for me, this project was really interesting because it was my first time spray painting and it was on the street instead of on a wall. So I got my spray painting 101 using the stencil. Cassie, is there anything you want to tell first time spray painters? Uh, your fingers gonna get very sore and <laughs> pace yourself and take a break so you can get a nice even spray because it will start to affect the coverage that you get with your spray paint. That's a good point. This morning I was at the chiropractor and you were at the physical therapist <laughs> and my finger was numb and how was yours? Oh, my whole arm. I I can feel it now, but... <laughs> yeah, it's a, a full body workout. Pretty intense <laughs> on the hands and knees. And um, I know one time I was using a spray can on a similar project and I really could, I honestly could not feel my fingertips. The nerve endings had gone like completely numb. I thought I had a carpal tunnel. <laughs> We're not sure what the moral of that is. Ice packs. Ice, ice packs. packs, there you go. A couple pointers are spray cans. There's different nozzles you can get and those will release different levels of paint. And depending on how detailed you need to get on and how small the cuts the stencil are, you might want to increase that so you're pressing down less on the can. What were some of your best moments of the project and what were some of your worst moments of the project? Starting with the worst. Okay, I think the worst is that the location is super, super busy. On one end of the street was to where the bike trails kind of go off into the Rock Creek Park, but there's a busier intersection at the very entrance to the street that was mayhem. And so there are massive tour buses and it just kept blowing like little pieces of junk onto the stencil. And the problem is once you have the stencil laid down and everything's lined up and then it gets full of dirt, you can't really pick your stencil off and move it and sweep again. I think I almost got hit by a massive bus. I didn't tell Cassie. <laughs> Best bus. Best bus. <laughs> no, hop on, hop off. Hop on, yeah. So it just pulled up and Cassie was the entertainment for a moment. You see those buses all the time in big international tourist destinations. What about the best? What's your highlight? Seeing all of the kids, they got really excited about the project. Oh, one girl was speaking in French to us. Really? Her mom. She was saying the colors in French. I think there's one group of kids in particular, they all came in a big group and then they were taking selfies in front of us working on the site. I know if I had seen something like that when I were a kid, that would have been awesome to see me out street painting. Kids are really fun because they just yell out whatever they're excited about. Yeah. So very unrestrained and that was really fun to see. At one point there was a daycare in front of where we were painting so the moms would be bringing their toddlers across the street and stop and look at the painting one after another. All right, Cassie, what was the best moment for you in this project? My favorite part was a moment that you pull the stencil off, because until then it looks really messy and you're just spraying, 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 and then you pull it off and it's just beautiful. What was the worst thing that you had to face with this project? Because I'm just an accident way through. Worst nightmare was the mask. <laughs> Enough said. Enough said. Spray masks, you kind of need them, but they are horrible. <laughs> Very important to wear it to save your lungs, but... Not the most comfortable. Okay, do we have like a medium area, like somewhere in limbo, in the middle, you're not really sure? What's it like good or what's yeah. it bad? <laughs> I think one of the oddest situations was that people would see us spray painting a stencil, and then they would ask us, did you do the other ones? And like literally like three feet away. It was the same stencil. The same like the stencil, yeah. It's a finished flower, and we're doing one right next to it, but they think that maybe somebody else did that I think that it's one. just to make conversation. That's, that's very true. When people see something that they haven't seen before, they don't know really what to say. And so when people ask like odd questions, it's really a good thing. They're trying to engage and they feel like they should say something. People ask why we're doing it or who had us do it. Is it the city or are you part of an organization? Are you supposed to be painting here? A lot of people were coming up saying, wow, it's about time this happened. We're so glad we're getting art in the cities. And that was different for me because I honestly, before coming to work for Broca Loco, I don't know if I ever had that thought, like walking down the street thinking, we should have art here. 
but the number of people who come up and say that to us and are super excited about it always kind of catches me off guard and it's really fun to see that. The orange one. We did. <laughs> Thank you. Great job. Appreciate it. it. <laughs> it's kind of fun just to be able to now walk through there and be like, hey, we left a mark on that part. Sometimes people ask us to do different buildings and places that we don't particularly have an emotional connection to at that point. We actually spent a lot of time walking around ourselves. So it's fun to have seen that area so many times, but to finally be able to, to add a, a piece of art and, and leave an imprint on an area. Yeah, I think it's a true test of your love for the neighborhood if you finish a long, long, long work day and then go shower and come back for a movie in the same spot. <laughs> We did do that, didn't we? <laughs> Was that my favorite part? It may have been. All right, so here are a couple pointers if you are making a stencil for the first time. Number one, we use the Strathmore paper because it's really durable and that's something that is gonna hold up for a while. In order to push the stencil a little further, we use a masking tape on one side. Not only does it strengthen the edges that you're cutting out, but it keeps the paint from soaking into the paper. That can happen if you're using the stencil too many times, it will warp the small cuts. And it actually worked out really well because wherever the folds were, we put a piece of tape and then that allowed us to fold the stencil up to get it to the site. You wanna start out with with making your stencil very small, just so you can kind of focus on the cuts and the detailing at a small scale. And once you see how that looks, if you like it, we scanned it in in order to play with the coloring and see how that would lay out in Adobe Illustrator. It's really fun because right now, Adobe added an element where you can have a really multicolored gradient. So this is really cool because we did that on this wrap that we showed you in the last episode. And we were able to, with spray paints, kind of recreate that mix of color and that really 2019 gradient. I think that was one thing that you were surprised about was how well the shading looked and how easy it was to mm -hmm. do. Yeah, it looked so hard to get that sort of ombre look, but it was really simple. Surprisingly simple. Then we used a projector to project it up onto the Strathmore papers in this situation because it helped us save a lot of time and focus a lot on the coloring. Turning the tiny stencil that we created last season into the bigger stencil, all right, everybody, that's all we have for you today. Do you have any kind of closing thoughts? <laughs> I think we already did a lot of thoughts. We did a lot of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're kind of changing the format up a little bit here. Don't get used to this. This may not be a repeating. It's a special treat. Special today. treat. All right, special edition couch time. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Aaron Scales. I'm Kathy Scales. <laughs> and this is Creative Capital. All right, see you soon.